you and your fill-in Romero in the past month or two have been down on Israel and are blaming Israel for breaking the peace treaty and uh, I, I'd like to know your exact thought of Israel and the Jews. Kirk, uh, look, we're here talking about economic issues. Um, you know, I try not to get into this endless, ongoing debate. And I get attacked by those that say I'm too, Isra uh, too easy on Israel. I get attacked by those that say I'm too hard on Israel. Uh, you know, Hillary Clinton, who's a con always flip-flopping, uh, you know, she's been criticizing Israel, so now she's being, uh, you know, being broiled in the media. Israel is being used as a military outpost. Benjamin Netanyahu wants to attack Iran. That is going to cause World War III. Every military expert we've talked to and geopolitical expert has said uh, and so, so you know, I love this. This is the dumb downness of the American people. That if I am against what happened in Israel, where they shut down the border crossings and started doing targeted killings, which did break the peace treaty, uh, and then Hamas is shooting these Tinker Toy rockets over, uh, and then Israel goes in and levels, and then now we've got to pay. There's some, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to go in there and rebuild it. All that does is then embroil the entire Middle East, and public opinion turns against the United States and Israel. I'm saying I'm against what happened there. Uh, and then that doesn't become, I hate Jews. Okay? It, it, it's, it's totally separate. It's completely separate. And um, that's all I have to say on that issue. I want to move on here. Let's talk to Vanessa in New York. Uh, Vanessa, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. Hi, Bob. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, I appreciate you taking my call. Um, I have a question, actually. I don't know if you want to say it's based on the economic problems, so I hate to get off subject. Hey, it's fine. But Nobody calls in about subjects on this show. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I heard this morning on another radio show that they're um, putting through Bill H.R. 1105, uh, talking about the RFID and the NAIS chip. And I want to know what I can do or I can go to protest this, um, just a lead or something like that. Okay, well, let me tell you. I mean, through, through feet, well, this is economic because the big agribusiness wants to shut down family farms and ranches. They've written the federal regulations that aren't law, but through fiat are enforced as law at the state level to where small farms and ranches have to put a $15, $20 tag on a $5 chicken, bankrupts them. Uh, or where you have to have your premises registered and then you waive your rights in that contract. Now, only a few states pass it as law, like Texas, uh, but then that got defeated in the courts, but they still go ahead with it. Uh, Bob, do you want to comment on the National Animal ID and the Premises ID? Um, it's really out of my category. Um, I know what you know, generally speaking, and that's it. Yeah, so, ma'am, I mean, people are fighting the uh, Animal ID, Premises ID, everywhere and i would just google nis or you know animal id premises id in your state uh, if you want to fight it or there's national groups fighting we've had a lot of those groups here on the show uh, i appreciate it and also i have a comment on uh, cnbc's um reaction to ron paul they said that they were going to uh come back when they were playing something more substandard and i just thought that was great that they admitted that in fact i have the transcript here they said we're going to come back. Um, I mean, I actually have the text here. I appreciate your call, man. Let me go ahead and read it. Uh, Haynes says this is not going as planned. No, it is not. This is when they cut away from Ron Paul. We were told that there was a very limited number of opening statements, and it seems to be getting out of control. Burn it. Here's what we forgot. Everybody is taking this live. You know what that means. Why would they miss an opportunity for free airtime? Haynes. We're going to take a commercial break and get them out of the way so that when something really substandard, he means substantial, is happening, we don't have to interrupt them. So the image here is how dare these elected congressmen are supposedly over the Federal Reserve, which they're not, bring up the fact the Federal Reserve is destroying America. How dare them? We'll cut back once Bernanke's up there. Uh, because normally they don't show the congressmen asking serious questions. They only show the private bankers. Uh, Bob Chapman comments. Uh, we're carrying that piece from InfoWars in tomorrow's issue. And so you'll be able to see it there as well as on Alex's site. Absolutely. Uh, and I saw the live version, and uh, that
that's exactly the way it happened. And uh, I was surprised uh, because they've admitted that they're managing the news. Well, it's just all right out in the open. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Brent in Texas. Brent, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, guys. Thanks for uh, all the information you put out. It's really incredible. I don't know how you can uh, put out so much material consistently, but I'm thankful that you do. Um, question was for Bob, and I emailed you about this, so I'm glad I got through. I'm very surprised. Uh, thanks for taking calls just for Bob today. You too. bet. You're on the air, sir. Yeah. Um, so, Bob, the question was, I know you're familiar with uh, with uh, Prector's Elliott Wave Analysis because you've commented on it on occasion in the newsletter, but you know, lately, I think it was in the last week or so, he came out and basically said, in this grand, what, the, what he calls a grand super cycle bear market, that uh, he'd be surprised if futures even existed after it's over. And he didn't give any kind of timeline, because that's impossible, but... Uh, you know, clearly it'd be devastating for the markets if uh, you know a major futures exchange went went under. But what do, what do you think about the likelihood of that, the prospect of that, and uh, if if it was yeah, possible? let me add let me add about a COMEX, uh, the uh, you know gold futures uh, defaulting. Can you comment on both those? Um, first of all, I'll answer Alex at uh, possible and probable, and to answer the original question. And that is, you know, we can have physical markets. We don't need futures. And maybe we should revamp the whole futures system so that it can't be rigged by government. And just like we should privatize the SEC and the CFTC so that they don't cooperate with the criminals in Washington and in Wall Street. I mean, the Madoff affair, and now we get the Stanford thing. Uh, SEC knew about uh, Madoff uh, seven or eight or nine years ago, refused to do anything, and they knew it was a scam, and there's hundreds of people involved. And with Stanford, they were told to stand down by another government agency. I mean, what is this? So, referring back to the futures markets, there's no control. The only control is the United States government doing what they want to do to those markets by manipulating and rigging them. And it's got to stop. And if it doesn't stop, people ain't going to play the game anymore. And the whole market will be physical. And that's why you're having the run that you're having for the last 10 months on physical gold and silver coins and bullion by individuals all over the world, but particularly in Europe. And now it's starting in the United States. And so we can do without futures exchanges. All right. If they're rigged. I mean, who wants a rigged market? Absolutely. Well, that's what the pirates want. And then they sucker the people back into the market so they can screw them. Ben in Oregon, you're on the air. Go ahead. I had I had two comments for you guys. Um, one, I actually I heard just on Russia's show right before I turned on your show, he actually admitted that they're saying that there's going to be a one-world uh, government and a one-world currency. But was he saying that if you're against it, you're bad? Because before he did, he said it didn't exist. Uh, no, he just said it on there. He said, I think he was referring to uh, another piece that a news organization was putting out. Or well, something. yeah, it's in hundreds of mainstream. Yeah, yeah, but he was he was just basically admitting it and saying that, you know, the liberals are going to be behind all of it, which he normally does. So Stay there. I want to hear more about this when we get back. That's a big deal. But, I mean, Russia spent 16, 17, 18 years telling people none of this existed when the guy's smart and knows all about it. And... I've been wondering the last few months, how is he going to say it doesn't exist when the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, CNN, the Times of London, the New York Times are all saying world government's real, the banks are going to rule you, but that it's good. It's good. This year, many of us will have to make the tough decision on what to cut back on and what's essential as we prepare for an uncertain future. In these troubled times, one of the most important things your family can have is good health. Some of the contributors to poor health are parasites, viruses, toxins, and heavy metals. It's a documented fact. 80% of all Americans and 85% of people around the world suffer from internal parasites and parasitic infection. Now you can fight internal parasites, heavy metals, and high 
high cholesterol naturally and safely by mixing fossilized phytoplankton powder, also known as FPP, with your favorite beverage once a day. FPP is now available to you from freshwaterorganics.com. A two-month supply starts at just $17. FPP is so affordable you can't afford to do without. Visit freshwaterorganics.com or call them toll-free at 888-949-3570. That's 888-949-3570. May I have everybody's attention, please? I've come with a message of information. 9-11 was an inside job. Do you like being a puppet, sir? Do you like being a puppet for the New World Order? How do the American people know that 9-11 was a stage, was engineered by you, David Rockefeller, the Trilateral Commission, the CFR? Please sit down and shut up. The day that we stop asking questions is the day that we have allowed the seeds of despotism to grow at our own door. Seven years after the attack. 